For most people, the idea of a community fish tank is a peaceful grouping of fish that get along well together without causing trouble. That, however, is not always the case with community fish such as they are labeled in your local fish store. So the purpose of this article is to go into detail a little bit about what is a community fish and what is not a community fish and to give you some examples of fish that I feel are truly community and fish that are often labeled community that are sometimes have aggression issues. So that as you choose your fish, you're able to pick a selection of uh, fish that are really suits your needs for your fish tank. There are other fish tanks or styles of fish tanks that you can set up, such as a semi-aggressive fish tank or even an aggressive fish tank um, if you're looking for that sort of tension and drama that happens within a, a semi-aggressive tank or even an aggressive tank. But for many people, especially people starting out, a community fish tank is what they really want. And this article is designed to help you uh, choose your fish appropriately. So right now we're looking at a picture of a platy, which happened to be one of my favorite fish. <coughs> this is a male platy. If you can look carefully down on his underside by his fins, you'll see a long um, tubular extension, and that is his gonopodium, which he uses to mate with the females. Now, platys, guppies, and swordtails, and there's a few other species, um, are live bearers, which means that the female gives birth to live babies. This is an absolutely tremendous thing to witness if you have children. Um, and keeping those and, re and rearing babies in a fish tank is an awesome experience. So platys and guppies are two fish that I, I highly recommend. Swordtails sometimes can be a little nippy and they can bully their female partners. This is a picture of a very typical uh, male guppy. They have those big, large fins and tails. Um, they're very playful. Uh, I think they're really a great fish for children. Uh, they will come up to the tank. They're, they're curious about what you're doing. Uh, they interact well, as long as people aren't banging on the fish tank. Uh, guppies can also bully their female partners. So along with platys and guppies and swordtails, if you don't want to deal with uh, babies, which often involves getting a second fish tank, um, make sure that you just choose males. Uh, the females in fish stores are often already impregnated before you even mix them with a male. So keep that in mind. The family of tetra fish that are community are all schooling fish. It's very difficult to find a single tetra or a fish that is would, would thrive in a living by itself. This is a picture of a lemon tetra and this picture isn't the best, but they are often very yellow. They have a silver and this yellow sheen that goes about them and then you see the yellow pigments in their skin. I always recommend at least a school of six schooling fish, and that would be six of the same species, not one from each family, because they really don't understand each other um, quite on the level that we think they do. These fish have evolved to live together in groups, and they feel secure when they are in groups or schools. Um, so in order to make them thrive, it's best to um, get them in groups of six or more. In larger tanks, I think a school of 18 to 24 is, are, is something that everybody should experience uh, once in their lifetime. So these are a few of the samples of fish that you can find as community. And as you choose to pick out your fish, then keep these things in mind. Because in the fish stores, not everything that's labeled a community fish is going to be community oriented. And if you don't want to the drama in your fish tank. Um, stick to the, to the gentler species.